different types who wear a day coat, pants with stripes, or cut away coat, perfect fits. The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. Illustrations by W. W. Denslow. Dorothy lived in the midst of the great Kansas prairies with Uncle Henry, who was a farmer, and Aunt Em, who was the farmer's wife. But Dorothy is about to be lifted out of her gray existence on the Kansas plains. The house whirled around and rose slowly through the air. Dorothy felt as if she were going up in a balloon. Toto got near the open trap door and fell in. She caught Toto by the ear and dragged him into the room again. In spite of the swaying of the house and the wailing of the wind, Dorothy soon closed her eyes and fell fast asleep. She was awakened by a sudden shock. While she stood looking eagerly at the strange and beautiful sights, she noticed coming toward her a group of the queerest people she had ever seen. You are welcome, most noble sorceress, to the land of the Munchkins. We are so grateful to you for having killed the Wicked Witch of the East. That is the end of her, explained the Witch of the North, but the silver shoes are yours to wear. I am anxious to get back to my aunt and uncle. Can you help me find my way? The road to the City of Emeralds is paved with yellow bricks, said the witch. So begins Dorothy's quest to see the Wizard of Oz. Soon she encounters something with a surplus of straw and a shortage of brains. While Dorothy was looking earnestly into the queer, painted face of the Scarecrow, she was surprised to see one of the eyes slowly wink at her. None of the Scarecrows in Kansas ever wink. Because of his wish for brains, Scarecrow joins Dorothy's quest. Standing with an uplifted axe in his hands was a man made entirely of tin. He stood perfectly motionless, as if he could not stir at all. Now oil the joints in my arms, he said. And Dorothy oiled them, and the Scarecrow bent them carefully until they were quite free from rust. Hoping that Oz will grant him a heart, the Tin Woodman joins Dorothy, Toto, and Scarecrow. But in the woods nearby lurks a frightening beast. There came from the forest a terrible roar, and the next moment a great lion bounded into the road. Little Toto ran barking toward the lion, and the great beast had opened its mouth when Dorothy rushed forward and slapped the lion across his nose. She cried out, Don't you dare bite Toto! You ought to be ashamed of yourself, a big beast like you! I didn't bite him, said the lion as he rubbed his nose with his paw. Badly in need of courage, the cowardly lion joins them on their journey to the Emerald City. But danger strikes in many forms, from mighty bear tiger brutes called Kaladas to a deceptively beautiful meadow of poppies. Their odor is so powerful that anyone who breathes it falls asleep. And if the sleeper is not carried away from the scent of the flowers, he sleeps on and on forever. Dorothy's eyes grew heavy, and she felt she must sit down to rest. Rescue comes from an unexpected source. The truck was a thousand times bigger than any of the mice, but when they had been harnessed, they were able to pull it quite easily. The mice scampered away through the grass to their homes. The queen of the mice was the last to leave. After thanking the mice for saving them, 
Dorothy and her companion set forth once more for the Emerald City of Oz. Dorothy and her friends were at first dazzled by the brilliancy of the wonderful city. The streets were lined with beautiful houses, all built of green marble and studded everywhere with sparkling emeralds. Even the sky above the city had a green tint. Everything seems wonderful until Dorothy meets the Wizard of Oz. I am Oz, the great and terrible. Who are you and why do you seek me? I am Dorothy, the small and meek. I have come to you for help. But instead of help, Oz offers Dorothy a bargain. Kill the Wicked Witch of the West. But the Wicked Witch is not one to take a threat lightly. Now the Wicked Witch of the West had but one eye, yet that was as powerful as a telescope. So she saw Dorothy lying asleep with her three friends all around her. The witch attacks them with 40 wolves, 40 crows, and a swarm of bees. When all fails, she orders the flying monkeys to do her bidding. Go to the strangers who are in my land and destroy them all except the lion, said the wicked witch. Bring that beast to me. Scarecrow is torn apart, the Tin Woodman is dropped onto rocks, the Cowardly Lion, Dorothy and Toto are carried away to the witch's castle. When the witch steals one of Dorothy's silver slippers, the girl fights back with the only weapon she has. Instantly the wicked woman gave a loud cry of fear and then began to shrink. See what you have done, she screamed, in a minute I shall melt away! Freed from the witch's spell, the Winky Guards express their appreciation by repairing the injuries her friends have suffered. The flying monkeys escort her back to Oz, only to find that the wizard is not what he seems. Toto jumped away from him in alarm and tipped over the screen. As it fell with a crash, they looked, and all of them were filled with wonder for they saw a little old man with a bald head and a wrinkled face. I am Oz the Great and Terrible, said the little man in a trembling voice, but please don't strike me. Oz reveals that he is a balloonist from Omaha who was stranded many years ago. Dorothy is disappointed, but she and her friends soon decide to head to the castle of Glinda, the Good Witch of the South. Along the way, Dorothy and her friends must brave fighting trees, a kingdom where people and dogs are made of china pottery, and the mild-looking but foul-tempered hammerheads. When they finally reach Glinda's castle, the Good Witch explains how Dorothy can return home. The Silver Shoes, said the Good Witch, have wonderful powers. They can carry you to any place in the world in the wink of an eye. Dorothy took Toto in her arms and having said one last goodbye, she clapped her heels together three times saying, Take me home to Aunt Em. 
At long last, Dorothy returns home from the wonderful land of Oz. And oh, Aunt Em, I'm so glad to be home again. Okay, so I'll see you later, huh? I'll give you a call.